After a space race lasting over 10 years, on the 12 line 1979, Apollo 11 touches down on our nearest celestial neighbor. Listen, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Over the next three years, the Apollo program makes five more landings on the moon. Astronauts explore the surface and gather a wealth of data. Most of all, the missions bring back almost 850 pounds of moon rocks. Radioactive elements in the rocks decay at a known rate, so scientists can date the age of the rocks. The oldest gives scientists the age of the moon. The impact occurred about four and a half billion years ago. And as this is the last cataclysmic collision that planet Earth suffers, the date is vital. Professor Moiges' zircons reveals Earth has water 4.4 billion years ago, very soon after the collision that formed the moon. If the collision had blasted Earth's water into space, where did the water in the zircons come from? Since water was present here in liquid form and abundantly very early on and soon after the moon forming event, it means that either the water was delivered very rapidly right after the moon formed, which I think is highly unlikely, or water was already present on or within the Earth before the giant impact that resulted in the formation of the moon. So the Earth's water survives this last cataclysmic process of planet formation. But how? Professor Drake thinks the water has been here from the start. He has a theory about how it survives. So the collision of a Mars-sized object with the Earth is an incredibly violent event. It'll melt the Earth. Now the obvious question is if the Earth went through such a violent event, how did it manage to keep its water? Most people think that if you heat something up, you boil all the water off, but that's not actually true. Any water that was in the Earth will be dissolved into that molten rock. That molten rock or magma is literally a sponge for water. You can dissolve vast amounts of water in liquid rock. The early Earth is a giant fireball of molten rock. Dissolved inside, are billions of gallons of water. But how does this rock become our blue planet? This red-hot molten Earth is gonna have lots of water in it, and that water's gotta go somewhere when the planet cools down. The rocks in this Arizona desert reveal what happens as the cooling rocks solidify. A rock that crystallizes deep inside the planet will have the water kept in the minerals that crystallize. Here we have some micas, this happens to be a granite, and that water will be kept in the planet for four and a half billion years. Rocks that solidify deep in molten lava can hold water, but lava near the surface forms a different type of rock. Any rock close to the surface, this one, for example, right here, you can see the holes in it, is going to lose its water. Uh, it's going to make little bubbles, which is what these holes are. Now imagine that there was rock like this all over the planet, crystallizing. Water gets out into the atmosphere. Just look at the mountain range behind me and imagine the amount of hot, steamy water that could be coming out of these rocks as they crystallize. All over the planet, water vapor escapes from the cooling rock. Earth's atmosphere is dense with steam. 100 million years after the impact that formed the moon, Earth has cooled enough to form a crust. And you'll have boiling hot rain coming down onto the surface of the planet, running down in rivers, and eventually making the oceans. Within tens of thousands of years, Earth has as much water as it does today. But it still doesn't look like the Earth. The water is green and the sky is red, dense with carbon dioxide. A billion years go by and life begins, eventually creating enough oxygen to change the atmosphere forever. Life itself turns Earth into the familiar blue marble. Water locked inside the magma 
explains how it survives the cataclysmic collision. But the story is still missing a chapter. Many scientists believe Earth has more than one source of water. Where did all of Earth's water come from? According to the leading theory, water arrived when many planets from farther out in the solar system collided with the early Earth. But scientists suspect this isn't the whole story. I personally think there's more than one way to get the water to the Earth. Like comets. Analysis of comets shows they couldn't be the source of all our water. We can be pretty sure that comets must have brought in some of the water, because we know comets must have hit the Earth. But the question is, how much? What is the fraction that they contributed? The solar system may have furnished another source of water. We've been hit by comets and asteroids, and some of the water may have come from there. But for me, it's a no-brainer. At least some, if not most of Earth's water, had to come from absorption of water under grains before the planet ever formed. But did these different sources bring enough water to Earth to support life? It's now impossible to work out how much of Earth's water comes from which source, because the water has been mixing for over four billion years. And over all that time, Earth's water has not only mixed, but changed. The Earth's oceans basically have gone through a lot of processes since the Earth formed. There's rain and snow and all of these things have caused the composition of the water to change a little bit. By how much the water has changed, nobody knows. But there's a place where we might find out. A volcanic island chain in the middle of the Pacific. On the big island, Hawaii, Dr. Gary Huss is searching for the oldest water on Earth. The Hawaiian Islands volcano is basically what's known as a hot spot a place where lava steadily oozes from the Earth. The rocks that we're standing on in the Hawaiian Islands come from the very deepest part of the mantle of the Earth, thousands of miles below the surface. And it provides us a sample of material we could never get any other way. When he looks at water locked in rocks drilled on Hawaii, Huss is actually looking at water from the middle of the Earth. Water unchanged since day one. If you want to look at what the composition of the water on Earth is at the time that the Earth formed, this is the, the only place you can look. Can Huss find evidence that there's primordial water deep inside the planet? Oh, it's one of these guys. Oh, that's neat. His approach is unprecedented, and early results suggest he might be onto something. Well, this is good. This is a great sample for your purpose. When we first found the hints, we definitely got excited about it. It does look like the water from deep in the Earth is different from the oceans, and it's different significantly. So different, it could be primordial water, untouched since the birth of the planet. This research could ultimately deliver extraordinary answers to the question of the origin of Earth's water. And Hawaii isn't the only test site. The team is also sampling water from another hot spot, Iceland. If we can nail this down for, say, the Hawaiian volcano, and then we can go to the Iceland hotspot and we get a different answer. Not only now do we have differences between the deep water and the surface water, we've got differences between a volcano on this side of the Earth and a volcano on that side of the Earth. There may be evidence for more than one source at this point. One day, deep inside the planet, they may find reservoirs of primordial water different from each other. Such a discovery would mean one thing. Our water must have different origins. The implications are profound. <laughs>